UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research, unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody and welcome to Westwood for another edition of UCLA Bruin Talk. I'm Dave Marcus, joined by former UCLA gymnast Allison Taylor. Today a great show for you as we focus on a couple of the powerful Olympic sports programs on the Westwood campus. Before we meet our first guest, let's take a look at the upcoming events. In this year of the Bruin Road Show, we got to remind you that there are some programs that are still competing on campus. And we're going to visit with the coach of the UCLA women's tennis team. They're playing all their matches at the LA Tennis Center right behind the Poly Pavilion construction project. Stella Sampras Webster, it's great to have you back on Bruin Talk. Thanks, it's good to be back. We talk about UCLA tennis, and you are certainly a fixture on the campus mm -hmm. here as a great doubles player yourself. Now your 15th year as the head coach. Does it seem like it's gone by that quickly? It's been really, really quick. I feel like this is like my second home. You know, after graduating here and then I was an assistant coach for a few years and now it's 15 years as head coach. It's, um, I just love it. I love going to work every day and it's, it's like, I said, like I said, it's like my second home. We mentioned that you had great success in doubles and you've got a real good young doubles team that's making an impact this fall. Yeah, our two freshmen, Skylar Morton and Robin Anderson, uh, we put them in a tournament and they, we really didn't know what to expect because this is, they've been to campus five weeks and um, entered them in this tournament and they won it and they actually qualified to play in the National Indoor Championship this week. So um, it was a nice surprise and they're very good, very talented and uh, look forward to seeing them grow and, and maybe they will end up playing together during the season. With the successful duo of Anderson and Morton and three other incoming freshmen and only four upperclassmen, who are you looking to to take a leadership role on the team this year? Well, I've got two seniors, uh, Carlene Seguso and McCall Jones. and. There are seniors, they've been with us, at least Carlene's been with us for four years and McCall was a transfer. And they are the two that I'm looking to really set the tone and really you know, instill in the freshmen the culture of you know, what we are all about um, with our program. So um, they should be doing well. And then we've got Pamela Montes and Courtney Dolahide who are also returners. We made it to the final four last year and they know what it takes. So I expect them to be you know, good leaders for our freshmen help guide them you know to do well this year. Pamela Montez and McCall Jones some good singles competition they both made it to the quarterfinals in your tournament a couple weeks ago. Yeah both very good singles players and we're all about just getting better and the fall is a time where they need matches and we're playing three tournaments and some haven't played a whole lot during the summer so this is a time where they need to either catch up um, but still keep improving and hopefully you know by the season when the season starts in January they'll be sharp and ready to go. You've 
got a few new teams competing in the Pac-12 this year. You've got a road trip in March to Colorado and Utah. That might be real interesting weather conditions. Yes, I mean, obviously we'll, we'll probably play indoors and playing in altitude is going to be a challenge. Um, but we're trying to do our homework and figure out you know, what we need to do to prepare to play there. Um, so it is even during our finals week as well. So that's another challenge. Um, but it will be an interesting road trip being our first time there. As you get back to, to, to the doubles team of Anderson and Morton, mm -hmm. you, as you said, they've only been on campus a few weeks. What goes into choosing a good doubles tandem? How, how do you put them together? What, what, what is the process of deciding who's going to play with who? Right. I mean, we try to combine them with a player that is a very aggressive player that can volley and finish points off with and combine her with someone who's a great baseliner who can set that person up. So if you have a very aggressive player and then someone who's just solid from the backcourt, they should make a pretty solid team. And Skylar Morton is very aggressive. She's probably one of our most aggressive players. Pamela Montes is also a great, you know, aggressive player. So I wouldn't put Skylar and Pamela together. I'd probably put them with more of a baseline uh, player. And and Robin Anderson is that for, for Skyler, and that's why they have made a good combination so far. But we need three good doubles teams, so we need to make sure that our other teams are going to be just as strong. So it's a challenge, and that's why we play in the fall and we figure out you know, what doubles teams um, you know, have good chemistry and work well together. You've been around the UCLA tennis program for many years now. How did you make the transition from student athlete to assistant coach to head coach? What were some of the challenges that you faced? What have you learned from that experience? Well, being a student athlete here was just amazing. And to be able to coach here is just a dream. So when I became an assistant coach, it was an easy transition because I was still very close with the players. And I, I was just learning, I'm learning from the head coach. And that's when I decided that I wanted to coach. And so when the head coach retired and I, I went on to be the head coach, it was very challenging because you're making the tough decisions and you're going to have players that aren't happy with you and um, have to deal with a lot of adversity and manage, um, you know, eight to ten girls. And it is challenging. And what I've learned is the communication is key. Really needing to communicate with the players and letting them know they can communicate with me and, and just uh, helping them grow, you know, through this process. But um, I mean, it's still challenging. I'm still learning. I mean, just going through experiences is how you really learn to be a better coach. And so, um, you know, I, I, I embrace the challenge because I know this year we'll have more challenges. And it's, it's a great job, fun job, because it is never boring. And um, I love it. Like I said, I love coming to work every day. You became a head coach at an age where you weren't too much older than your players. Again, that wall got built up, didn't it, when you took the head job? Right, right. I mean, I was, you know, probably 22, 23 as an assistant, and then um, became the head coach. And I still felt almost like their friend, you know, at 27. And I, I had, I learned quickly that I needed to, you know, just have some boundaries with them. And, um, you know, like I said, I learned. And now that I'm, you know, I've grown so much. Now I'm a mother. I'm uh, a wife. And, you know, back then I was, you know, just, you know, single and, and, and the team was everything to me. But now I'm balancing, you know, my life with, um, you know, and I have a totally different perspective being a mother and how I want my program to be. So it's, it's really interesting to see how I've grown as a coach. Last year, the Bruins made it to the top four. You played Florida in the semifinals. Mm -hmm. Is it too early to start mapping out who your likely opponents might be as the season progresses and as the tournament time comes? We definitely look at what other teams have. You know, Florida is going to be very strong because they have everyone returning, and they won last year. So they're the top team to beat. Um, but you also look at SC. has got some good freshmen coming in, and Duke and Georgia. You know, at all the tournaments, we get to see who they have. And, you know, you want to be able to, you know, you kind of look at your team and kind of match them up and see, see kind of where we're at. And um, but obviously in the tournament, the draw comes out. You hope that you've got, uh, you know, a, a draw that is matches up well with with us. Um, but uh, right now, our focus is just improving and getting better and um, taking one match at a time. 
your season starts in early October and goes all the way through May. How do you get your athletes to stay focused? How do you get them to stay motivated? And most importantly, healthy for essentially the entire year. Right, it's a long season. Even though you know, we play tournaments in the fall and, and January is when we start our dual, dual matches, it's a long season compared to a lot of other sports. So that motivation and, and keeping them focused and knowing that they're going to school as well and dealing with midterms and everything else that goes on with college, it's a challenge. And that's what makes, I think, a college coach strong is being able to relate to them, but also um, you know, know, know what to expect and for them to know what to expect from you um, because it is challenging. And then there's some players that, you know, you do all you can and they just they won't get it and um, you know we just do the best we can but it is it is challenging for these players and like I said I, I can relate to them because I've been through it um, and they can all do well but it takes work at UCLA you have to study you know you've got to go to class you know to practice is tough I mean they're going to be tired and and lack of sleep is is the part of the deal and they learn quickly and by their senior year they get it hopefully earlier than that <laughs> but we do see the growth and that freshman year first quarter is a tough quarter for those freshmen coach you've got a tournament the first week in November then nothing until January obviously a time to do final studying and catch up on schoolwork but what are the players going to do during that fairly long break to work on their games? Well, we can do, they'll do conditioning, so they'll stay fit, but we can still work with them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and so we will continue to do that. And then they can play with each other. We encourage them to play matches against each other and continue to train. Um, because obviously they, you know, with tennis, you can't take a break. Um, you really need to continue to train. And then know that after December, you've got another three weeks before January. And they'll go home, they'll train, they're used to it. They know what they need to do. And in January, they need to be sharp and ready to go. This may be a different question for the freshmen than for the seniors. But at the college level, as a head coach, are you working with the players more on the mental aspects of the game or on the actual technique of playing tennis? Everyone's different. But freshmen, we do look at their games. I mean, we're learning a lot this first quarter because you know, we're learning how they train, how they've trained in the past, and like how they need to adapt to this college. You know, we only have four hours a day that we demand of them, and they're used to practicing five hours a day just tennis. So it's an adjustment for them, um, but you know, their freshman year, we're always looking at technique, um, you know, but a lot of it is, you know, again, keeping them motivating, keeping them, you know, getting them to work hard, um, and then developing a plan for them so they know, like, what they're focusing on in practice every day, what they need to get better by January, kind of having short-term and long-term long -term goals um, so that they, you know, have a purpose, you know, every day in practice. Before we close, I just want to reassure the viewers that the LA Tennis Center has been unaffected by the Poly Pavilion construction. Right. So people can still come out and see your matches. Right, right. No, we we would love for player for people to come out and watch our matches. It's free of charge. Our, you know, our matches are very exciting, and I know our players enjoy when we have fans out there. So the more people out there, the better. I know we play better probably with when we have fans there. So we would love to have that support. They're going to be good, they're going to be fun, and they're coming to an L.A. Tennis Center near you. Coach, thanks for joining us. Always great to have you on Bruin Talk. Thank you so much. And we'll be back with more UCLA Bruin Talk right after this brief public service announcement. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. Hi, and welcome back to Bruin Talk. It is now time to honor our Student Athlete of the Week. Our Student Athlete of the Week is Rachel Kidder from Women's Volleyball. For the first time since 2000, the first ranked Bruins completed a season sweep of Stanford, defeating the Cardinal in three sets. Junior Rachel Kidder led the way with double figures in kills. The UCLA women's volleyball team improves to 20-3 overall, posting their 13th straight 20-win season. 
Rachel has led the Bruins in kills 17 times this season as the outside hitter position. And her other career statistics are nothing short of impressive. Congratulations, Rachel, and good luck to the rest of the team. If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at uclabruins.com. And as we continue our look at UCLA Olympic sports, we turn our attention to the pool. The beautiful Speaker Aquatic Center is the home to UCLA swimming. And we're very pleased to have a couple of the stars of the team with us today. Isabel Williams and Kelsey Loudon, our seniors, welcome to Bruin Talk. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Kelsey, as you look back, being a senior, can you believe how fast it's gone? No, it's been pretty crazy the past four years. I can't believe how much has changed since freshman year, but it really flies by. Definitely. Well, Isabel, fast is something that's good for a swimmer, isn't it? That's very true. <laughs> very, very true. <laughs> you swim really demanding events, butterfly and backstroke, two yes. of the hardest strokes. How much of your pro progression here at UCLA has been uh, something that you've developed over the four years you've been here? I mean, that's pretty much what it is all about. It's all about the journey. Um, if you look at where you started, say, freshman year to where you're ending now as a senior, you're an entirely different person and you're an entirely different swimmer. And yeah, it's, it's crazy, it really is. Both of you being seniors this year, not only have you progressed in the pool, but I'm sure you've progressed academically, you've really grown up as people. What advice would you give to incoming freshmen, particularly incoming freshmen uh, starting their freshman year at UCLA? I would definitely say like take a deep breath and like relax into things and really just um, take advantage of the resources available and talking to um, professors and office hours and forming study groups but really just kind of relaxing into it and just doing you know time management and work working like every day towards it and I know you know Taylor but it flies by <laughs> and so if, and you don't realize how much you're just constantly going constantly going um, you know constantly have this next thing this next thing this next thing so if you're able to just take a deep breath and just have fun with it you know, because by the end of your senior year, you're like, oh my gosh, that went so fast. Mm -hmm. Well, I've learned a couple things about swimming today. You have to go fast and take a deep breath. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> Crucial. Uh, Kelsey, let's talk about your events. You okay. swim the individual medley and you also swim the breaststroke. Mm -hmm. And that's a stroke that d requires a lot of technique. Yes. How has your technique progressed over the four years? Yeah, it's been definitely interesting kind of um, learning different technique coming like into UCLA and even more recently like still constantly changing so like that's kind of the nature of the sport of swimming is constantly um, learning new like techniques and you're constantly thinking about um, your improvement in technique during the entire practice. It, it, and we got a new assistant coach who was a breaststroker so that's helped the breaststrokers yeah, a lot. Who it is. Uh, Kelly Stein she swam for um, Michigan really great, uh, made it to NCs three out of the four years she was there, and she was a breaststroke specialty. So that's really helped a lot of our breaststrokers, I feel yeah, like. definitely. The 2011-2012 season is officially underway for yes. you guys with a win over UCSB. How does it feel to start the season off? What do you foresee for the Bruins this upcoming year? You know, we're really excited. We have a really good incoming cla uh, freshman class who have already made a lot of waves and did really well at our first swim meet. Um, and we did lose a lot of, you know, pretty high caliber swimmers graduate. Um, but we have a lot of NCAA returners like Bianca, Kashari, Yasi Jahan Shahi. Um, and then added with that, our new incoming fr freshman class, we're really excited. Well, we've learned another thing. Yeah. Take a deep breath, go fast, and make a lot of waves. Yeah. <laughs> um, Isabel, you. <laughs> Allison mentioned you've excelled not only in the pool but also in the classroom. You have the highest GPA on the team. Did. Did? Yes. <laughs> yes. Kelsey Hall has it now. We have another girl. But well, that's still pretty good. It's still pretty good. And it's demanding in swimming. You, you guys work out a lot. How many hours a day do you work out, first of all? I would want to say four on four average. Four on average, yeah. On average. You guys, I know, have both been involved in extracurricular activities and clubs and groups through the athletics department. Can you tell us a little bit about those groups and what they, what they do here on campus? Yeah, so SAMS, which I know Taylor was a part of, it's student athlete mentorship. And basically, you're just meant to be this sort of resource that people can come to, um, whether or not they have questions about life, their sport, school, anything, and you're really supposed to, we develop our mentors to be able to handle any sort of situation. So we've gone through suicide prevention training, we've gone through eating disorders, eating disorders. 
it's unbelievable. I mean, that's yeah, fan it's fantastic, cool. and, and it's got to be very rewarding, Kelsey, mm -hmm. to, to see the impact you have on fellow students. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a really um, cool opportunity to be a resource to other people and, and like learning and the trainings, being able to share that information with other athletes, and to just kind of creating um, the sense of community among athletes that I think sometimes um, isn't necessarily there, but with the different clubs and like BAC, it kind of like unites the um, athletic yeah. world at UCLA better. Isabel, you talked about Cindy Gallagher, your mm -hmm. coach, who's been here a while and she's uh, developed experience over the years. What's the most valuable advice you've received from your coach over your oh, career? Oh man, there's been a lot. In the pool I, or, I or guess, out of the pool? I, well, I guess one thing that I've always taken away from what Cindy says to me a lot is you can only, you can only control what you can control. So focus on what you can control, change what you can control, and then, I mean, at the end of the day, that's success. Kelsey, swimming's a pretty large roster, mm -hmm. and you're in, the, you're in the lane by yourself, but you got teammates up on the pool deck who are cheering for you. It's an amazing atmosphere yeah, at a college swimming meet. Uh, how much does the camaraderie of the team help your performance? Um, I think it's really important, and that's one of the things that we started off this year really with our retreat, wanting to build that um, strong sense of community and unity within the team because we think that like the closer we are as a team the more we'll kind of vibe off each other at meets and it, and I think that's really important too like at the big meets when people are swimming well it's just like spiral effect so that's something that's definitely important. Swimming is usually seen as an individual sport other than the relay races but can you guys tell us about how you make collegiate swimming even if it's an individual race a team environment? It does seem like an individual sport, and it very much is. When you dive off the block, really, you're determining your own success, you know, to and from the wall. But I think that you get to know people on an entirely different level that you would never know someone else. And I think that if you then compare your friends to, say, high school friends or friends in the future, we know these girls. You, you, ne you never will know someone like the way you know your swim team right now. And it's because you've gone through so much together. You've gone through winter training. You've gone through the times when you're the, at your highest, and you've gone through the times when you're at your lowest. I also think, too, like at practices, like we're, sometimes we break up into our like specialties. And so it kind of creates um, the sense of team as far as um, you know, you're racing the person next to you and really um, kind of pushing them and they're pushing you so ultimately like it is individual but at the same time like you do rely on your teammates to you know for the encouragement but also to push you to be a, a better swimmer too. Mm -hmm. Kelsey last year you made the all-time top eight Bruin list for the 200 Woo! breaststroke. <laughs> Can you tell us what it was like to receive that honor? There have been great swimmers that have come through UCLA so how does it feel to be on that very prestigious list? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty stunning, and like I think it really hit me when we have, we have our um, banquet at the end of every year, and there's a brochure with the names, and so when I saw my name like bolded for the people that are still at UCLA, I was like, oh my gosh, that's really cool, but um, I don't know. I think just kind of, it was an amazing race just kind of letting go, and I really wasn't thinking about anything, which is I think when swimmers generally do their best, so yeah. The season's underway, yes. and I know you're supposed to think the most important meet is the next one, <laughs> and I won't think about anything past that. But as you look at the season, what kind of stands out as meets you're looking forward to? Definitely pack 10s and NCs, but I think the one that we all sort of get up the most for is our um, rival meet with SC. And that's when s people sometimes tend to swim the fastest, that's when records drop, that's when really crazy uh, swims occur. Are you keeping tabs on how they're doing in the in this in this time of year? No, definitely not. I think it's really early too for a swim season. I mean, we have a long. It starts September and then goes till February, March. I mean, that's a long, long time. And I think that we really try and focus on what our team's doing, what we can do, and we don't really look at what other. Maybe the coaches are, but we don't as a, as swimmers. Um, Kelsey, senior season. What's the overriding goal you have for yourself personally? I know you want the team to do well, but personally, what's your goal for the year? Um, I definitely, I haven't made NCs yet, so I really am excited about um, the opportunity and to make NCs, that's what I want to do. But um, also just reach my potential and um, just know that at the end of the year, I've done everything possible that I could to um, get where I'm going to be. So um, definitely just having no regrets at the end and because after this year, swimming's over. <laughs> so really just giving it all, giving it everything. You guys, we've been talking about how the season is very long. How do you, I know y'all get up so early in the morning. How do you time manage your time? How do you keep that intensity up for that long? <laughs> I definitely think it's, 
it's really about like staying focused and taking one practice at a time, and um, and also just having those end goals in mind. Like we're gonna, um, we've been going through a goal setting process lately, but it really just helps you with um, your vision and and why you know why am I getting up earlier? Why am I doing this? It's it's all for your the end goal. So having that in mind, and um, and also we've done it for so long that it's. It's not as, I mean, it is, it's difficult sometimes, but you get into a groove and it's not too bad. <laughs> Isabel, I've got to ask you about butterfly. It, it is such a difficult stroke. And, you know, you're not nine feet tall like Michael Phelps no. with, the, with the big wingspan. <laughs> how, how do you get into swimming such a, a technically demanding stroke? How old were you when you started doing it? I started doing it when I was really, 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 really young. And I have no idea, honestly. I think that maybe I started out good at it, so then I just kept doing it. Um, but as far as why I did that stroke specifically, and you know what? A part of a big thing about butterfly is the kick. Um, so it's like what you can do with your lower half. Um, and I think that I was always just sort of like more naturally good at that, so I just sort of stuck with it. Are there ever any times in your practices, maybe goofing around after practice, when you guys try strokes that you don't normally do? do you... Yeah, we typically swim all the strokes in practice. I mean, you'll race your own stroke or your best two strokes, but you typically will have, by the end of the practice, have done, or I will typically have done some breast stroke by the end mm -hmm. of the practice, and I'm not a breast stroker. And Kelsey, swimming the medley we talked about, I mean, mm -hmm. you've got to be good in four different disciplines. Yeah. Uh, how did you, when did you realize that you were overall good enough to do that? I think, um, I'm not sure, just, I started swimming when I was eight, and so I feel like just kind of, a lot of the teams I'd been to were a lot of um, technique in all four strokes, and so um, just that constant, like, working on the different strokes kind of just all came together, and, um, and I like it, too. It keeps it fun and interesting when you can, do more Switch than one out. or two strokes, so it's like you can choose. You have a little bit more range of, um, you know, decisions on what you want to do, That's like true, yeah. in in the practices. So it keeps it interesting. Well, talking about fun and interesting, it's been fun and interesting talking with both of you, and Thank uh, you. we really enjoyed Thank it. You. Thank and you. And we hope you enjoyed it at home. We'll be back next time with another great show. Until then, so long from Westwood. <laughs>